Uh, okay, welcome to our second video in the clinical reasoning, uh, gathering data portion. And here we're going to use again our framework as we walk through a case. So let's take one here. Now this woman is saying that her belly hurts. So now you need to approach this patient. So the first thing you're going to do is get the initial data, right? And we, we acquire the data, and this is going to be given to us perhaps by the nurse who gives you something that says it's a 56-year-old woman, belly's been hurting since 2, 2 a.m., and you can see the vital signs here, right? And so the next thing you do is you interpret and organize. So we, what's our problem list here? She has abdominal pain. She is 56. Maybe that's important. Her blood pressure is a little bit high. Right, so those are some important things. And, and we also know that she doesn't have a temperature, and you'll see why that's important later. Right? Now that we've gotten that, next thing we're going to do is we want to make a differential diagnosis. And remember, we had that approach where we can figure, well, what's probable? What do most people who come into my office with belly pain have? Maybe they have the stomach flu. What are things that we cannot miss? Well, things that could kill you, right, like appendicitis or an infected gallbladder. Or we could have a systematic approach. What else is in the belly? Well, there's kidneys. Okay, maybe it's a kidney problem. There are blood vessels like the aorta. Well, maybe it's a blood vessel problem. There's the uterus in a woman, so maybe it's the uterus problem. So you can see that we have uh, an approach to this. Now, remember, this is a very, 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 very abbreviated differential diagnosis just for the sake of this video. And then testing diagnosis. Remember, we want to decide whether we have enough to trash something that is rule it out? Do we have enough evidence or information to rule something in and begin treatment? Or do we need to collect more data and can do more testing? And in this case, we don't have enough. Uh, and none of the diagnoses really seem any more likely than the others, so we need to collect more data. So let's do it. So now we move on to our history. And so we got our OPQRST here. It started at 2 in the morning. It's worse by moving. Nothing makes it better. The pain is sharp. It starts in the right lower back and doesn't go anywhere from there. It's rated 7 out of 10 and it's intermittent. So that was us acquiring data. What did we acquire? Uh, we acquired the OPQRST. Did we do it accurately? Yes, you know, we'll learn how to do that uh, later. Okay, next is we want to interpret and organize. And so remember, we want to also get data that is specific to our differential diagnosis, and that is something that is over here, and not some, you know, a key feature, and not something that overlaps. And so let's, let's get things that are important to the things we thought of. Is there anything that suggests stomach flu? And so what do we think? What do we know about the stomach flu? Remember, somebody has um, the stomach flu. They tend to have diarrhea. This patient said she didn't. Uh, they tend to have vomiting. This patient said they didn't. Okay, what about appendicitis? Well, I, I think the appendix is on the right lower side of the abdomen. Uh, so we ask them, does it hurt there? And they said, well, maybe it hurts a little bit. Okay, what about gallbladder? Now, I know that the gallbladder, I think that hurts more whenever you eat fatty-type foods, so we can ask that. Any change in the pain when you eat fatty foods? And they say no. And the last problem thing we had on there was kidney problems. Uh, have you had any kidney problems before? And she says, yes, I had a kidney infection last week for which I was taking antibiotics. And in the past, I had a kidney stone. So, so note here again how we go through everything that was on our differential and ask questions that are specific to this. So now what do we do? What's it? we got to interpret and organize. What's on our problem list? We have, in addition to those things from before, we also have a recently treated kidney infection as well as a prior kidney stone. So hypothesis testing, is there anything else we would want to add to our differential? Yes, absolutely. we got this kidney thing to go on with, right? Kidney stone and kidney infection we're going to add to our stomach flu, appendicitis, gallbladder stuff. Uh, and so let's move on. And do we have enough data now to, to either rule in or rule out something? No, not yet. But given that stomach flu thing, um, that was our initial most probable diagnosis. I think we're going to change that to kidney stones since she just, she's just she got a history of kidney stones and it kind of hurts on the right side. Maybe she has a kidney stone in her right kidney. Let's keep going. Next to the physical exam. So we acquire data. First we want to acquire, acquire data that we get on everybody. And we can say generally she appears anxious. Her head, ears, eyes, nose, and throat are unremarkable. Her neck is unremarkable. Her heart is unremarkable. Her lungs are unremarkable. Her belly, she has no pain over where the appendix is and no pain over the gallbladder. So that's important. Remember, we were worried about those things. Her back, uh, it's gently, it's tender when you gently tap on it on the right side. And she's been acting normally. And so now let's go through and see as we interpret and organize our physical exam. What do we know that's important here? We got this thing here, right? Tender to gentle pounding on the right back. That's another problem we can add on to our problem list. Oh, disregard this. This is 
from a prior video. And the uh, and this is also important that there's no pain over the appendix and gallbladder because that makes those other two diagnoses that we had a little bit less likely. Let's keep going. All right, so now make a diagnosis, make a differential. Do we have anything new we want to add to our differential based on that information? No. I think this stuff really, this stuff really is consistent with the prior kidney issues we were worried about. Uh, and do we have enough information at this point to say that we can rule in or rule out something? Well. Uh, the kidney stuff is starting to look a lot better, especially the kidney stone. Haven't eliminated anything yet, so let's move on to testing. Okay, so what do we want to do for testing? So we know that for kidney stones, I think I heard that you get blood in your urine, so why don't we send off a urine test? And I think a CAT scan is good for picking up kidney stones, and we can also kind of see appendicitis and, and gallstones as well, so why don't we get a CAT scan? All right, so we, you'll notice that we ordered a test based on what we were thinking about, what we had a suspicion. We never order tests just uh, randomly. We order them to either confirm, right, if we want to rule something in, or refute something if we want to rule something out. So let's get that CAT scan so you can see it here. This is only one slice of a CAT scan. It's usually many, many more slices, and we're not teaching right now how to read a CAT scan. But I'm just going to tell you. Let's just say it looks pretty normal. Okay, the urine test looks, you know, it was a little bit cloudy. That's what turbid means. There is large amounts of leukocyte esterase. And what that is, it's, it's, an inf it's an enzyme made by white blood cells. Those are the things that fight infection. And there are also some red blood cells. That's what you see when you're bleeding. And there's more than 200 white blood cells uh, in the urine. So, whoa, look at that. There's a lot of things the, of infection-fighting cells in there. So maybe there's an infection going on. Maybe there's a kidney stone. There's not a lot of these. But on here, we did not see a kidney stone. So now you got to think, well, what's going on? Now my most likely diagnosis is going to be kidney infection, since we have things that look like infected. And kidney stone is becoming less likely, since I don't see one. And the appendix and the gallbladder, let's say, were also unremarkable. So anything new we want to add to our differential at this point? No. Uh, in fact, I think we're removing things. I think we're going to take stomach flu out of there, right? And so what we can do is we can trash stomach flu because I think we got a pretty good other reason for it. We also had a normal gallbladder, a normal appendix, and I remember our exam was pretty unremarkable for those two things as well as the history. So maybe we have enough ev evidence to trash those things too. Um, kidney stone, uh, it's, you know what? I don't think it's that. I'm less likely suspicious of that. Uh, I am pretty suspicious, though, of kidney infection. So maybe her kidney infection has returned and she needs antibiotics. And so, once again, you can see how we went through, how we thought through this case, collecting initial information, history, physical, and then testing. And through each one of these contexts, we went through this cycle of data gathering and hypothesis testing over and over and over and over and over again until we found something that we were able to rule in. And over the course of this, hopefully we ruled out a whole bunch of other things. Okay, great. I will see you in the next video.